Right then, I've started doing laser reviews. Don't blame me, it was never something I was interested in until Bamboo released the H2D, and that has a laser option. So I started doing laser reviews as no more than a comparator, and a way I can say, hey, Bamboo, I know lasers, can I have a free expensive 3D printer? But then something happened. I started to enjoy them. But then something else happened. Dozens of people warned me about optical safety and just how dangerous these things are. And it got to the point where I became so paranoid that where I started to get blurry vision one day after using the Falcon's IR laser, I got worried it had potentially blinded me. Now, thankfully, my optician confirmed I was no more than over-caffeinated and proved I had no laser damage, but it left me cautious enough to consider this as a lucky free pass. And going forward, I will never operate any laser device without the correct certified safety glasses, whether the device comes sealed by windows or otherwise. And since this is in my home, I'll also never allow anyone to enter my office when I'm using a laser. But above all, I just don't want to do any more laser reviews without having this video live that I can refer people to as a very clear warning not to take the piss with this stuff. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. So first up, before optical safety, actually first I need to say I'm not a laser safety expert. Don't take this as professional advice. This is more me covering my ass before giving you a starting point to do your own safety research before bringing one of these devices into your home. Especially now that so many brands are advertising them like everyday consumer products. So here's some stuff to know first. Lasers can, and often do, cause materials to catch fire. In many cases, these should self-extinguish. Or you can blow them out. Some high-end lasers even have the option for CO2 extinguisher add-ons and sensors to handle all of this manually. But all laser devices, or at least the ones you consider, should have working emergency stop buttons. And another thing you should know is if you're using a laser, you should never leave it unattended. You don't need to stare at the whole job. In fact, you probably shouldn't. Just stay within actionable distance. But without a doubt, have a CO2 fire extinguisher on hand and learn how to use it because, well, you can't breathe CO2. And if you try and extinguish flames in a really small room with the door shut, think about it. But let's talk about what you can breathe. Not the given off by many materials you'll be marking, engraving, or cutting. So here's a list of dangers. You can pause and read through them whilst I'm talking. And this list isn't everything. And if you're new to lasers, the chances are you probably won't know what half of the stuff you're cutting is actually defined as. So the TLDR is, you shouldn't be breathing this stuff. Most home lasers come with enclosures and extraction hoses, and you really want to be chucking all of those fumes outside. Now, in lieu of that, some brands do offer indoor filters of varying qualities, but I'm yet to see a brand directly confirm what any of these actively block or how much of it. What I do know is that with all of these filters, I can still smell burning wood every time I laser wood. So I have to wonder what else could be getting through, and I probably won't know for about a decade if I'm sat here smelling regret. So ideally, get this stuff out of your work environment. I've got a separate video about using resin printer enclosures and using aircon window socks. Now, personally, I had a plumber mate drill a 100 millimeter hole in my garage wall, and I'll be having proper direct ventilation installed soon. That might be a future video. Is it something you'd be interested in? Anyway, let's get onto the meat of the video, optical safety. And this one took me days to work out using YouTube videos, Google, and getting misled by ChatGPT several times. If anyone's used ChatGPT5, I, personally, I think it's absolute bollocks at the moment. Anyway, laser light is incredibly strong. Just one milliwatt of laser energy directed into your eye is enough to cause irreversible damage. And for those of us who forgot most of what we learned in elementary school, don't feel bad. I had to double check this too. There are a thousand milliwatts in a watt and the lowest power laser I've used so far is 10 watts. So think of that as 10,000 opportunities to blind you every fraction of a millisecond that a laser is on. And it's not just staring at the laser either. Laser light can reflect off anything. I've had people in my comments tell me they've damaged their eyes because all of the walls in the room were white and it reflected and bounced off the walls in the room. The point is wear glasses, but we'll get to that. In fairness, the light would need to reflect into your eyes to cause the damage, and the chance of that happening might be small. 
but let's say even if it's only a 0.1% chance, and I'll bet it's actually much higher than that, that's still a 0.1% chance of 100% causing irreversible eye damage. Or for a more amusing way to put it, 0.1% of the time, it'll blind you every time. And maybe to more experienced laser users, I could come across as fear mongering. Please know that's not my intent. I said in the intro, I'm no expert. So please feel free to correct me or validate me in the comments and I'll update the video description. So if you're watching this, check the video description for updates. What I do know is that as an absolute beginner, I had no idea about this stuff and Lumitool sent me their machine knowing I had no idea about this stuff. I remember staring at a piece of material as I was trying to engrave it using the infrared laser without glasses on, wondering why couldn't I see it marking anything? Yeah, that's exactly the sort of dumb that beginners would do. And do you guys realize how close I was to shouting, hey kids, come and check this cool device out. Now, for those of you who are beginners, infrared light is invisible. Stainless steel, which I was engraving, is incredibly reflective. And the lens of your eye does an incredible job of focusing light onto the retina. So infrared can blind you faster than your brain can even register pain. And because it's invisible, you don't even have the luxury of a blink reflex to marginally reduce the damage. Now I know I was harsh on Lumitool for their lack of user guides, but in reflection, pun intended, with their absolute lack of any safety warnings for me or any user, if these guys operated in the Western world, they'd probably be locked up if they managed to get this thing on the market. And for those of you watching, you'll probably think, but they sent you safety glasses. Yeah, I can hear the whinge. Well, two things. One, I was a complete beginner, as I said. And yes, an idiot one at that, I'll admit it. But I'm not alone in this. Lasers are being pushed to consumers. There will probably be more people like me and people doing stupider things than me who might actually look straight down an active beam to see if it's working. So yeah, I'd rather scare people a little if it makes them take safety precautions. But the other call out here is what a lot of people have said on my videos. With a lot of these brands, the glasses they send you are absolute crap. They are cheap shite and do not offer adequate protection. So this is where we come to the real meat of the video, choosing the right glasses. And no, a welding mask is not adequate safety. Yes, it blocks light, but we need glasses that block specific wavelengths of light. Now, in the home market, there are typically three types of laser. Diode lasers with a wavelength in the 450 nanometer range. Infrared lasers are becoming more popular for engraving metals, and they're in the 1064 nanometer range. And even CO2 lasers, because, well, they're freaking awesome. And they operate in the 10,600 nanometer range. And you need glasses that protect against those specific wavelengths. It's not a case of just get the CO2 lasers, glasses, because they'll cover everything below 10,600. No, it's glasses per wavelength. Now you can sometimes get dual wavelength glasses. For example, Xtool sent me glasses that cover both diode and IR, but they've got different optical density ratings for each. And that's another important value, depending on how strong your laser device is. So here's a table I put together from various sources online that suggest a minimum OD value for glasses at each laser strength. Once again, this isn't gospel. It's based on what I learned online. And if there are any recommended changes to this, I'll update my video description. So go check there first before you buy anything. But even then, this video should only serve as the start of your research. Go and verify it. And yes, bear in mind that the recommendations you see in most places are potentially overkill. I mean, a lot of these lasers already have shielding on, right? But safety experts, being what they are, seem to always base their advice on preventing the worst case scenario, like your device giving you a full on Cyclops level blast to the eyes rather than just an errant reflection. So personally, I'm gonna get glasses with that in mind because I don't know when or if I'll ever need to perform maintenance or if there's some circuitry in these machines that could short and fire a laser at the wrong time. So I went looking for safety glasses. One thing stood out, they're all bloody expensive. And when it comes to cheaper alternatives, I stumbled across a brand on Amazon called Free Mascot or Free Mascot or Free Mascot. 
whatever. So after a bit more research and binging some great videos by the channel Laser Everything, someone who actually blasted a laser at paper through these glasses to show the marks or lack thereof, I still wasn't totally sold. No marks on printer paper doesn't necessarily mean no damage to your retina even though apparently the thickness is about the same. That's a fun fact I learned on this little safety journey, so now you know it too. Might be handy for a future pub quiz night. Anyway, I emailed Free Mascot and asked them to show me their CE certificates. And they happily obliged. For those who don't know, the CE marking and certificate means that they meet EU standards for laser safety. And the test report they sent was from a third party certifier, rather than just something they knocked up in Photoshop, I hope. Now, I didn't go as far as contacting that certifier for verification, and the skeptic in me wonders, what if the testing company is just their mate down the road, handing out gold stars for cash? Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking that, but personally, there was enough for me to make my own decision to trust them. And if you do the same, then it comes to buying them. And when buying, you do still need to be careful. I bought a load of pairs just to make sure they were all actually CE branded, and they were. But I also wanted to check the fit. Amazon listings are a bit of a mess. There's a ton of different lens types and styles, and they're not easy to sort. Now, thankfully, on many of the product pages, there's a grid at the bottom separating them by lens type, and then on each listing, you can choose the glasses style. But here's the trap. Whilst the title might scream OD6 or OD8, the product graphs and detailed descriptions often reveal that the ratings only apply to specific wavelengths, which is why I now keep separate pairs for both diode and infrared, and why I actually have to remember which bloody laser I'm using before putting the right ones on. A good example is glasses that say they are OD8 in the title are only OD8 for the infrared laser. For a diode laser, they're only OD6. So read the descriptions carefully. Now, when you're looking at these, there's also something called transmittance, which basically means how much normal light gets through. The lower the percentage, the more it's going to feel like wearing sunglasses indoors. And as for styles, some look cooler than others. Some have extendable arms. Some have silicon straps. All of them come with surprisingly nice protective cases. Now, since I already wear glasses, I found a lot of these left gaps around my eyes that I could still clearly see through. And some of the pairs did this even without my regular glasses on. So in the end, I went for the incredibly large ski goggle style because they fit over my glasses and actually cover my eyes properly. And no, they don't look cool. But who's going to see me wearing them, apart from my own family members occasionally and the tens of thousands of people watching this video? But they won't see you, so if you want them, wear them. But that's it. By all means, get a laser. I don't want to scare people out of not getting lasers. They're incredibly fun. Just, as I said in the intro, do not take the piss with safety. And for video skippers, this is not professional advice. Check the description for updates and let this be the start of your laser safety research. Get a fire extinguisher, vent your fumes outside if you can, or at least have a smoke filter. And always, always wear safety glasses when using lasers. Wear sunscreen too. That was good advice, Baz. I will put affiliate links for Free Mascot and the fire extinguisher in the description. These are the ones I personally chose to trust. Whether you use these links after making your own personal choice to trust them, or you buy an ebook or some random kitchen gadget you don't really need from Amazon, if you click that link beforehand, I'll make a commission and that's at no cost to you, but it's how I keep the channel running. And if I've scared you, educated you, or entertained you, or completely pissed you off, let me know that in the comments and hit the like button. All of this helps engagement. Engagement helps reach, reach gets views, and views build the channel. We're so close to 500,000 subscribers now, at least compared to three years ago. But tell me, tell me your laser experiences too. I want to make sure that I stay relevant for future videos. I want to say thanks for watching and a huge thanks to our members who keep this channel going by literally paying me. They get early access, their names on screen, Discord roles, and exclusive videos. So please, consider joining up or dropping a super thanks. Anyway, I hear you. Shut up, Ross. That's enough now. All right, I will. Until next time, I've set my laser from stun to kill. Fohammer out.